Hello everyone and welcome to Happy Howland Dog Training. I'm Dustin and today we're going to be talking about bringing a new puppy home. What to do, what to worry about, what not to worry about, and how to train them. Bringing a new puppy home is an exciting adventure, but it comes with great training responsibilities. And today we're going to go through the initial steps to lay the foundation for an amazing puppy. When you initially start to work with your puppy, all you want to do is you want to build a value to yourself and to the situation that you're trying to have the puppy in. And what I mean by that is we're just using his breakfast here. So just his regular kibble. You don't need to use a whole bunch of treats or training treats with these guys. And when you're holding the treat, you want to hold it into a position where you can kind of get him to shape what you want him to do. So if I want him up here. Yes. I'm not going to pair any commands with it right now. All I'm trying to do is get, get the, uh, the motions down what we're trying to do. So if I'm wanting him to sit, I'm going to bring the treat up and over his face, cause him to sit. Now this is just a, this is a place box that I built. They have beds, they have all kinds of things, but these boxes are maybe 10, 15 bucks to build at your local hardware store. Get it down, yes. And at this point, this is where you'd wanna use a clicker or your mark word. I prefer a mark word because I know I'll always have it with me. I can't guarantee I'm always gonna have a clicker with me. Yes, and the key is patience. So it's not gonna look beautiful, it's not gonna look pretty, it's gonna be kinda of all over the place, but it's important that you have patience with a puppy because they don't understand what you're wanting them to do at all. This puppy is eight weeks old. He's never been worked with. He is an Alaskan Malamute, so he's already kinda of stubborn headed. So when you're working with any type of puppy, just make sure you have patience because patience is key. If you want an impeccable puppy in the future, it's all about how you work with them as a puppy. And like I said, just take their breakfast, take their dinner, um, and make, make it a game. He's gonna get exactly what he needs for his nutrition. You don't need to use treats at this point. Yes. If you pay downs between the legs, so if you pay it right between his legs, it'll cause him to stay in a down in a lot longer position. Help us with our down stays in the future. Let's see if we can get a heel out of him. I'm gonna steal that. and pay him right where you want him. So I'm gonna do that again. We wanna make his name a very fun thing. Titus. But use your noises. Yo, yes, good boy. So it's just making the game fun. It's making, it's making everything that we do high value, okay? So if we want these puppies to grow up knowing that we are, the, we are the value, we are everything to them. It's starting as a puppy and working with them and making sure that they know that, hey, if I do these things, I'm gonna get paid. Now, when we look at boundaries, it is so important to make sure that your puppy understands where they can and where they can't be, especially if you don't have your house puppy proofed. When you're working with your dog, I always recommend either have a leash always attached to them to where you can always get that puppy out of any situation or guide them out of that situation or simply have a crate or a pin that you could put them in if you want to give them a little bit more room to play with their toys in. Now kennel training is so important to make sure that you have your puppy understand what a kennel is from a, uh, an age of a puppy all the way up to an age of an adult. It makes the most sense that if you can't trust your animal within your household, there's a time and a place to make sure they know where they're safe and comfortable. Now, starting when they're a puppy, if you always work with them in a kennel, they'll understand that this is their safe place. This is the place to sleep. Sometimes this is the place to eat. Really depends on exactly how you wanna raise your dog. Now, we know this is a, a super small kennel for Titus. He is an Alaskan Malamute, so he's looking to be anywhere from 80 to 120 pounds but you do not want to buy an extra large crate and hope that it's going to work perfectly now like it is going to in the future. Having too big of a kennel can cause a lot of problems. Now when we initially look at kennel training, it is so important to make sure that when you put your puppy in the kennel and they start barking, yelping, whining, that you do not give in because they will, they will start to condition themselves to understand that once they make a noise, once they bark, whine, whatever it may be, that you're going to let them out of the kennel. So they'll do it every time to get out of the kennel. So it's so important to make sure that you always release the dog out of the kennel on a good note, on a silent note. So 
when we put Titus in his kennel. Now, the other thing is being creatures that love to be in dens and things like that, putting a blanket over the top and leaving the front or the back open is a good way to make sure that you get airflow through the kennel. But at the same time at night, it's gonna be a safe space for him to lay down and go to sleep. It is so important to make sure that when we release the puppy, we don't release an unexcited note because every time they come to the kennel, they'll be wired, wired for sound and they'll be ready to jump all over you, pounce, bark, do whatever they do. So releasing the puppy on a quiet note is the most important thing that you can do when you're releasing them out of the kennel. So if I open the kennel and he starts to rush the door, I will reclose the door and I'll wait for him to give me a calm sign. So working with your puppy on that and making sure that if they're not going to listen, just, just reclose it on them, open it. And the minute they can give you that body language that you're looking for and to, to calm down, stay relaxed, then you can open it all the way and let them out of the kennel. And starting from puppyhood, it's the most important thing that you can do. And when we talk about socializing your puppy, we talk about many different environments. We talk about with other dogs. These are all full grown uh, Siberian Huskies. We're talking about socializing them with everything that we possibly can. So when they get older, they're not startled by other dogs. We just let them play. Make sure that if you do not trust your animal, and I always recommend the very first time, you let them meet through the kennel. Let them meet through an area that you know that they're not gonna be aggressive towards one another. They've already started kind of acquainting themselves, understanding the boundaries, the limits. Um, if the puppy gets you know, corrected by one of the other dogs, they'll do it very gently. And know the difference between play and aggression. Even when we're socializing a puppy, we wanna make sure that they understand that, that kids will be kids. And sometimes a kid will run up on a full-size dog and, and itch him and start playing with him, and you never want to have a bad reaction. So even if you have a friend that has a little one or what have you, and you have your puppy, let the little one play with the puppy. Of course, there's gonna be some puppy biting. They're teething. Um, they're starting to learn how to you know, work their mouth. And we'll have a full video on how to work with puppy biting. We're, we're just making sure that the puppy is acquainted with everything so it never becomes a shock to them when they get older. When we talk about socializing a puppy, it is so important to know the places to go and not to go. One of the number one sicknesses that can kill a puppy is a, something called parvo. Parvo can make them super sick and it's usually found in feces of other animals. When we talk about puppy proof in your home, it's important to make sure all the things that you think that a toddler will get into, a puppy will probably get into. So. When we look at extension cords, if you have extension cords laying around, stuff plugged into the wall, they will chew on those cables and it could result in a high emergency bill. Stuff like hangers, if they chew and break pieces of hangers off into their mouth and they swallow it, it could hurt their intestines. As well as like these little things like these little darts, these plastic little dart heads come off, they can chew those off and swallow them and cause a bowel obstruction. So make sure that when you're puppy proof in your house, you're looking for all the things that if you think a toddler will put in their mouth, a puppy probably would too. That should help lay an impeccable foundation for your furry friend. Now make sure you follow along for all the adventures that we're gonna be doing with Kytus and all of our other Huskies. I always see all these comments that say, oh, if you could do that with a Husky, I'd be impressed. And we are the ones that do that with a Husky. So make sure you follow along for all the adventures, more training tips and tricks. Hit the subscribe, hit the bell to know when we post a new video.